I am recording on my side. Okay. Welcome, welcome, and welcome everybody to this call today. Now, I am a, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this call, and here's why. I, I got introduced to Chris through a mutual friend uh, of ours who's also a longtime industry name, Bob Corcoran. I'm sure most of you on the call today have probably heard of Bob Corcoran. Um, Bob introduced us when I was putting on the Get Listing Summit back in February which was a virtual summit about, you can probably guess, getting listings, right? And, uh, Bob, introduced, and Bob was one of my speakers, one of the people that I, folks that I interviewed, and he's like, man, you gotta talk, do you have anybody talking about CRMs and what you can get out of them? And I was like, I, I got a few potentials, and I was like, why, why, why is, what do you got in mind, Bob? And he's like, man, I have got the guy for you to talk to. If, you got, if you're gonna have anybody talk about CRMs on your webinar or on your virtual summit, this guy, Chris Tam from Firepoint, is the guy to do it. And for those of you who have ever heard Bob speak or know Bob at all, he's uh, he's a very no nonsense, matter of fact guy. And Chris can probably have stories about that himself. Uh, he's not one to you know kind of he's not one to compliment for no reason or compliment lightly. Um, and you know a lot of people, Bob's clients are very some of the best performing, most successful real estate agents in the industry because of the fact that Bob can hold anybody accountable to just about anything and make sure they get results, right? And that's the, that's one of the important things about Bob is he focuses on things that get results, right? He discards everything else. And uh, a CRM platform and a CRM system is something that from his perspective, every agent needs to have and use. And most agents from his perspective don't maximize it well and don't know how to use it well. And so that's why he introduced Chris and I uh, for the Gill Listing Summit to talk about just what can you get out of a CRM, right? We didn't even really talk that much about FirePoint. We just talked about what can you get out of a CRM. And we broke down things like velocity of money and what does it mean to get ROI on leads and, and not have it in a vacuum of just number, just, just base numbers like, oh, I got leads and three years later I got an ROI on it so it paid for itself versus what happens if I have a lead source that doesn't convert as, it doesn't have as high of a profit margin per conversion, but it, but it gives me, you know, four transactions a year. Well, that's the velocity of that money. Uh, is so much more, is so the, the, what that does for you at your end of year revenue uh, is inc is just it, it's a completely different kind of business, and I'm not even doing a good job right now uh, of doing justice to all the all the math and the science and the wizardry that Chris broke down uh, and shared um, on that interview. But uh, I brought him back here now to share with the my outdesk community because I believe that what he has to share is very very uh, insightful and very, very valuable to us. So the most successful agents that are our clients use their CRMs very well. They maximize their CRMs. Um, and of course, coaches, leading industry coaches like Bob talk about CRMs constantly, beat the drum on using, you know, pound the drum on using a CRM effectively. And um, give me just a second here. I've got some audio. There we go, I have to mute somebody else. Can you still hear me, Chris? Absolutely, yes. Okay, yeah, I had another panelist on the call who's just observing, but they were uh, getting up some audio from them. Anyways, as I was saying, so, you know, a guy like Bob is constantly pounding the drum for people, agents to use a CRM. Um, our most successful clients here at my outdesk maximize the maximize their CRMs. Or I'm, I'm talking about people like Ben Kinney, Lisa Archer, um, you know, Andrew and Angela Duncan, uh, Tristan Ahumada, Nolly Williams. I mean, I'm talking about names that any of us would recognize. So if the most successful agents are obsessed with getting the most out of their CRM and using their CRM in ways and they're using their CRM in ways that maybe most agents aren't, then why aren't most agents learning how to use a CRM better? And so because of that pers big picture perspective that we're seeing behind the scenes here at my outdesk, this is why uh, we're doing this call today with Chris. Uh, and got Chris to share about an hour of his time here and to just go over three main talking points that I really want to dig into today with him and then give him a chance to demonstrate inside the FirePoint tool um, how some of those things can be accomplished. Irrespective of whether you guys decide to take advantage of the offer that we'll have for you today through FirePoint, with FirePoint, through my Outdesk or not, 
the information on the call will be insightful and valuable for you just to actually even learn and apply and, and deploy into your business, okay? So with that very long-winded introduction and backstory, which probably still doesn't do justice to some of the value that Chris brought to the Gillison Summit, we will bring today. Uh, welcome to the call, Chris. Thanks, Andre, and definitely thanks for all the kind words. Um, yeah, I think, uh, do you mind if I give just a very quick background on my history in real estate, then we kind no, of just jump right it. into go it? go for it, yeah, yeah, go for it. Awesome, perfect. So for anybody listening, um, I think a lot of times you hear people talking about real estate or what to do in real estate or systems or things like that that haven't actually had experience or something that you respect in the real estate community. Um, personally, I was in residential real estate for four years and that time grew a real estate team from zero to closing over 400 transactions a year through traditional residential resale. Um, no builder contracts, REO, any of that, even though those are great. It was just traditional uh, resale, buying and selling. Also started on a title company, helped start two mortgage brokerages and then started what turned into Firepoint. In 2014, I sold the, all, everything I had in the real estate businesses and doubled down everything in Firepoint, came over to run that full time, and we've just grown, I mean, leaps and bounds from, from development, from clients, we have thousands of clients across the uh, agents and top teams across the U.S. and Canada, um, and we look at ourselves as more of a business management tool, even though we do a lot of different things. So this is definitely not about, like Andrew said, this is not about Firepoint. What I hope to show is just looking at your business differently and the questions that you may not be asking and I would argue probably aren't asking today that you can go away and ask yourself no matter what system you're using today or use tomorrow. And of course we have a kind of a special offer at the end of this, but this is uh, irrespective of FirePoint, what you can do to run your business and look at it in a different way and the things that you're probably missing today that anybody in another industry coming from a marketing background or a C-level or questions that they're going to ask, but a lot of times they don't get translated correctly into real estate. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that, Chris. And thanks, to, thanks for just being the guy that you guys are in the culture that you guys have at Firepoint for just being able, just being willing to contribute value to the industry and the community, even if people aren't buying your guys' tool, um, and just building that value that speaks volumes to um, just how you guys are approaching your relationship with your clients. Um, I want to start off with this. I actually do want to talk a bit about what you just said, that there's a lot of questions that agents don't ask themselves. But the question that I want to start off with is kind of like a high-wire question and it puts you a little bit on the spot. But I think that for everybody on the call, to start a call off with this would be really valuable because we're in a, we're in a revenue, you know, we're in a very revenue-focused business. I mean, all businesses are such, but especially for us as solopreneurs and real estate entrepreneurs, we're all the more so, right? If we have a bad month, that can mean a lot of things for us downstream and in a relatively short period of time. So where I would like to begin the conversation today is this. How could an agent uh, with a team, could be even a small team, but how could an agent with a team significantly increase their growth, say, in the next 90 days, using FirePoint or even any CRM, what is it that they're not thinking about or not asking themselves uh, or not doing with a CRM or just with the business management process that if they were to do this X, Y, and Z or these one, two, three steps or even this one thing, they could drive significant growth not only for themselves but even as a team agent. And right, from today till three months from now, they could look back and say, wow, because I implemented those things that Chris shared, my business now is has experienced significant growth. And if you do have any sort of actual demonstrations to show inside FirePoint, then please log in and do. Um, and you know, folks can just separate any specific FirePoint details out if they have to. But I don't want you to stay away from using FirePoint to demonstrate it if you have something you can use to demonstrate. Makes sense. Okay. So I think there's a couple different answers to that, at least from um, how I look at the business, how our company looks at the business. And when I say like my history in real estate, my history is nothing compared to so many people on this call. Um, like our uh, VP of sales and service at our company was in real estate for 12 years, closing over 800 transactions a year um, as a large team. So, like there's so many people with more experience. So again, prefacing that all, everything that I say, there's much smarter people out there that have things. But I think these are things that people don't look at. Um, so 90 days is a very short window, and I think the answers are going to be different. If you said 90 days or 180 days, you're going to get different answers. So if we're focusing on first 90 days, what can drastically change an agent's business, revenue, costs, um, what I would say, number one, 
is, I'm going to say what it's not, it is not lead generation. Um, if you would start lead generation today on any platform, the chances of you getting transactions that are going to meaningfully move the needle over the next 90 days are very low. Even if you got somebody looking to sell, they might want to sell in a month, might close in two months. You can't guarantee that. So I would say, if you're saying 18 months, very different question. So not lead generation. Um, if you're looking at a 90 and, and, you're say, and you're saying that from a perspective of having done 400 retail deals a month or a year yourself, your team, your team at current team members at Firepoint have done in real estate themselves massive amount of volume, and then you're also probably saying that from seeing the big picture of thousands of clients and what's working for them with Firepoint right now. I'm assuming. Absolutely. That uh, when you turn the knob on lead generation, you have all the things in place to execute that well. Um, depending on the lead source, that's usually like a 90 to 180 day, or maybe 180 to 365 day. So what, three to six or six to 12 month window that you're going to see meaningful new moves in that needle. You'll always have people that will have uh, some people drop in and close sooner. But if you're saying I need to make two changes that meaningfully move the needle. I would say lead generation isn't one of them if you're looking at really that 90 day window. If you're looking at the six month window, again, totally different conversation, but I would say right away it's not lead generation. Okay. Um, the biggest thing I would say is, uh, this can be one question is, as an agent or a team, and when I say a team, it's an agent with a part time assistant, anybody that's coordinating a process. Um, do you do any type of lead generation? And some people when they think about lead generation think about buying a lead. I would say it's anything you're doing to prospect or buy a lead. Because anything you're doing to prospect is your time, which has a dollar value associated with it. And that dollar value should be what you'd have to pay somebody else to do it for you. So I've heard people say all the time, well, I door knock an hour a day. That doesn't cost me anything. Completely wrong answer because if you could pay somebody $20 an hour or 25 or 30 whatever it takes to door knock the way you door knock, um, that's the value you need to put to that time. And you need to record how much money that you spend on door knocking, even if it was just your time that you could have spent doing something else. The reason for that is, is that probably the first big thing you could do to move the needle over the next 90 days um, from a cash standpoint or a conversion or anything is looking at what you've done in the past and what that return on investment is for everywhere you're spending your time. If you're buying Zillow leads or pay-per-click or doing Facebook ads or door knocking or circle prospecting, anything that you're doing, it takes your time or your money, calling FISBOs expired. Probably the big thing is ROI, return on investment. First of all, knowing what that means. When one person says six to one ROI, one person says three, they could be saying the same thing, but one's doing it before splits, before cost, one's doing it after splits, after cost. So ROI, return on investment, is one piece, but something that, uh, Andre, you touched on, ROI is nothing without time to convert, which is they call velocity of money uh, in a marketing sense or macroeconomics. It's how fast does something convert to actual cash. And uh, I'm going to pull up a quick slide on this very quickly. It's from some of the teaching presentations we do. This is a quick comparison between a two to one ROI and a six to one ROI. And why I would rather have a two to one ROI return on investment, spend a dollar, make two all day long if it converts faster. So this is kind of, everybody can see my screen here. And um, this is kind yeah. of a picture of, yeah. hey, six to one ROI that converts every nine months. So month one, I spend $100. Nine months later, I get $600. I take that $600 and invest it. Nine months later, I get six times at the $3,600. I mean, great return on investment, making six times my money. This is usually all people care about is the six to one ROI. I spent a dollar, I made six. They forget all this down here, how long it took. If we look at a two to one ROI, you take, uh, let's say it converts every three months. I take a dollar, it becomes two in three months. Then in three months, it becomes eight, then 16, 32, 64, 128. Um, and it keeps going. Actually, this is probably $100. So this becomes, what, uh, $12,000 in the same amount of time that the previous money turned into $3,600. This only had a two to one ROI, but it was converting every 90 days. And so when you look at return on investment, it means absolutely nothing unless you know the time it takes to convert. Like if I told you, hey, I turned $100 into 300,000, it doesn't matter. Is that over a lifetime? Was that in six months? I mean, obviously it matters, it's a lot of money, but $100 into 300, if it's in 30 years, nobody cares. If it's in a day, everybody cares. Right. And so. If you have a system, and again, from a FirePoint standpoint, FirePoint runs all this together. It has all kinds of different ways of looking at uh, lead sources that we said. And a lot of this is looking at past data. And the reason I say in 90 days you can make big moves with this, um, we had a team that was doing a lot of transactions, and they felt their highest lead source, uh, let's say it was Facebook. And so their okay. Facebook here has the highest return on investment compared to, let's say, Realtors.com or Zillow or something else. Let's pick on the common ones. 
So this is real numbers. So let's say Facebook has a 1,300% ROI. But when you look at the data, Facebook, for them on average, took almost uh, – what, a year and a half, 390 days, so just over a year to go to closing. Mm. But Zillow was taking 110 days to go to close. Mm. All day, I would rather have a 200% ROI that closes in 90 days as compared to a 1,300% that go takes over a year if you're looking at a 90-day impact because making decisions where you spend money, you might be making decisions. Let's say you need a lot of cash six months from now then you need to make different decisions in the next 90 days than if you really don't care and you just want a huge return a year or two years from now. And so if you don't look at the big picture of what you're trying to do as an agent or a team, for everybody it's not as simple as just make as much money as possible. There's cash shortages. There's I really want to do technology stuff. I want to take a few months off. I have telemarketers that can follow up on these. And another piece with this, and again, it's hard to kind of talk about in generalities, Facebook leads traditionally do take a lot of time and are very intensive to work. So it depends on your team structure. Just because you have a high return on investment doesn't mean you have the setup to really follow up with them correctly to get that investment. Um, so again, that piece, I know it's a really long answer, but it's the idea of inputting all of your um, leads and your transactions and really seeing what the return times were, how fast your money converted into cash for your different lead sources, because then you're comparing your ROI with the actual time to convert, and you can actually make accurate decisions. You know what I'm thinking about as I see this, and I'm thinking this on behalf of everybody here on the call who, you know, a lot of them are our clients, is guys, what's possible with this once you're tracking data like this is, you know, if you know that you're going to need some extra money in 90 days from now, or like Chris said, if you know that you're going to need some cash, extra cash flow in six months from now because you got to hire or you got to invest in some things or whatever it may be, you'll be able to look at which sources are going to get me the most amount of cycles of ROI per, you know, for my effort and spend, and then be able to double down on those in the short term, especially if you need to generate something quickly, uh, faster than normal. Um, now, again, you probably maybe you want to do like do it, have that approach by default, anyways, because you want to make as much money as fast as possible and keep growing. But if there was something that you had to do to make happen in the for whatever reason, 90 days or six months or et cetera, when you have this kind of track of when you can track like this and see the ROI, that, that makes a massive amount of difference because you're not you're not flying blind anymore, right? You have real world intelligence, you have real feedback. Absolutely. And that's I think everybody is focused on either some kind of lead generation, whether it's sphere or mailers, whatever it is. And, but if you can't step back and have all this information, like the idea of, and again, this can be an Excel spreadsheet. There's other ways to pull this together. But like, look right here. This is real information. So if 5.1% conversion on Zillow and 1.1% conversion on Facebook, there's a lot more legwork here, but it takes a lot longer. It has a much higher ROI. So it's kind of a question of do you want to, what cost do you want to buy closings at? How long do you have to convert those? When do you need the cash? All those different things play into it. But this also plays into your team structure that if you have agents that need business quickly or if you have agents that can work on a longer term schedule or a longer term pipeline, you're going to want different lead sources given to different people. And also people have different personalities based on conversion. It's a whole different conversation, but some are great handling sign calls and some are horrible uh, handling sign calls. In that, um, do you mind if I get into kind of the next answer to that question? No, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Awesome. So next question is, if you're doing any kind of lead generation. So uh, if you're not doing any kind of lead generation, hopefully you can listen to this for if you ever do. So any kind of a lead. Uh, so if you're handing a lead to a team member, if it's a sign call, if it's um, an internet lead, if it's a contact form inquiry, anything you're handling, you're handing to one of your team members, the question is how are you doing it? Are you being fair or are you giving equal opportunity? And those are two completely different answers. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I'm just fair to all of my agents. Well, why? Is that fair to you and your bottom line? Because if you're not profitable, you're not going to be able to drive the team forward, and they have to understand profit is not an evil word. It's a, a security and a safety for the team. That if John is always at soccer practice, one of your agents, at 2 p.m. or on Sundays or all night Wednesday night, why is he in lead rotation? I hear a lot of teams that say, oh, we put everybody in round robin. Well, if John's not there on Sundays, why is he getting leads on Sundays? He's not going to be able to respond right away, and response time is everything, even for a referral response time is everything. So that's customer service. It shows you're on top of what you do and it buys you kind of that emotional, fill up the emotional bucket. So if something goes wrong later on, they know that you're on top of everything. And so response time is everything. And so I would kind of ask that if you're using a system, a CRM, or if you're not, 
how are you distributing these leads and are you focused on response time and quality response being the number one things you care about and not letting your systems tell you how to run your business but running it from what you know is actually right and the best thing and so kind of from a firepoint standpoint again you can do this in different places but if we said um, hey I'm gonna create a rule for I don't know just Zillow that uh, just between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. on certain days whatever it is and they're under a million dollars because my million dollar leads go to somebody else that works at a luxury market and just in 80122 the zip code where John works or whatever that is you can go to different people that will automatically send text messages and start campaigns and they can even rip away and say hey I'm gonna if I have a couple different users here I'm gonna say every three minutes it's gonna rip it away and send it to somebody else so there's again this is the idea of trying when you run a business forget FirePoint, how would you want to run your business, forget technology, and then find a technology to help you do that instead of saying, oh, I use this system, it's all that it allows me to do to run my business. And so from the lead standpoint, a lot of agents think about a lead from what it costs to buy that lead, which is the wrong way to look at it. And when I say buy a lead, it's a sphere transaction. I had an agent say once that the sphere transaction failed to close, like, but it didn't cost me anything. No, the cost is the amount of commission and the referrals you can get from it over the next five, 10 years. It's not the cost of the lead. And so valuing the leads as $5,000 or 10,000 or 20,000, that's the cost of not doing it correctly and getting that one transaction closed, that additional lead converted, because you got it to the right person at the right time and didn't just say, oh, everybody on my team gets 20 leads. No. I mean, they get leads when they're able to work them and respond quickly or they don't get it. And so just different opinion there. Gotcha. I like that. And you, are, you are tackling the next question that I had, which is, you know, you know, let's talk about how can you really focus on ROI and like you were saying not just in a vacuum as one piece but ROI within the time to convert setting right uh, but from your perspective with your, with your guys' most successful clients what are they doing and I think you maybe already answered it but I want to make sure that if there's something else or if there's any additional insight that you can offer then I want to make sure we give you a chance to unpack it what um, what are you guys seeing your most successful clients at FirePoint do to maximize ROI when you combine uh, a team with it. Uh, but I'm not saying just necessarily agents, I'm saying maybe a virtual assistant or even an admin person. Absolutely. Talk okay. about the best practices around really like accelerating, really accelerating the results really fast when you combine this ROI focus, the discipline of this ROI focus with a team, virtual assistants or admin staff or whatever it may be. Yep, I think there's two different areas there. One area is in task follow-up, and the other one is in accountability and coaching. So on task follow-up, um, and again, showing how uh, it's done kind of in FirePoint, but it can be done anywhere else, is the idea of, I think everybody that's in real estate, especially if you have a team, I would argue most people are not on top of all of their tasks. So like in FirePoint, we go and we see how many overdue tasks every person has. This should never happen. I mean, every task should be followed up on because every task is a chance to make that call at three months to an old lead or a call to a past client. There are golden opportunities there. And as a team leader, you said and you set up when you started a team, who calls, who when, what's the process, and here's what it is. It's part of your training. You're their sales manager. And if you haven't done that, you have to do that. I mean, when you have a team, you are their sales manager. You're telling them what to do and when. And traditionally, most agents aren't on top of all their tasks. This should always be zero. And most team leaders feel held hostage by team members that they let be on their team instead of finding somebody amazing, always be recruiting, and finding people that are amazing until people are on top of their tasks, everything's being done, because those are golden opportunities. You find somebody that's sphere in the next 90 days or lead that does want to do something now, yet yeah, all it takes is phone calls or text messages or emails. So staying on top of people from an accountability standpoint, a lot of teams use either virtual assistants or admins to go through and do this process of once a day looking at everybody and then saying, how can I help these? Fill 109 tasks, how can I help Phil? How can I help uh, Jamie or Anthony? And then going through and then making recommendations back to the team leader of, hey, here's what needs to happen. Uh, Steven has 22 leads, he's never, I mean, three leads he's never even viewed. Like these are issues, this board, all these numbers are issues. I mean, this person has 60 leads with no safe search and 70 leads with no tasks. Those people are falling through the cracks, are going to die, and that's money today. Like Those leads have already been paid for. You're not looking for new leads to come in. They've been in here. They've probably been nurtured. And so that admin accountability piece, it takes time to go through, but 
if you have somebody on your sales team, your job as their sales manager is to audit what they're doing to hold them accountable. And the second you don't is when they start getting away with it and all the money you've spent to train is walking out the window or there's low hanging fruit that somebody else could take and run with. So I think that first piece is accountability. And then the second piece is coaching. Um, from a coaching standpoint, and from coaching, it could be using admins or VAs to make these calls, which happens a lot of time. I mean, I've seen all different types of teams where they say, hey, you have your calls to make. If they're more than a day overdue, then our admin's going to take care of them. And if they convert that lead, it's not yours anymore. So, I mean, lighting a fire under people that, I mean, yeah, you're off on Tuesday, so our admin's not going to call on, on Wednesday. But if you still have overdue tasks on Thursday, admin's going to take it. They'll make the call. If they convert it, it goes to somebody else. So do your job. Again, that's maybe a harsher way to look at it. But the, the team manager is the owner and calls the shots for what happens on their team, and they're held accountable for everything that happens. They can't blame anybody else. The next piece would be on coaching. Um, as a sales manager, and this is in when I was in business and our most successful clients when they're in business, sales managers coach and script every single day with everybody. It's not like a once a week, but if you want to make it a once a week, when you're sitting down with your agent every single week because you're doing it in your one-on-ones or you definitely should be, you come in here and we say, hey, I'm going to look at uh, John. I'm sitting down with John. We're going to click on phone calls here. Now, let's actually jump back really quick and... We're going to look at just the dialer calls. I'm going to jump to a couple different screens here to kind of show different ways this can happen. I'm just going to click here on how many calls they made to the dialer. Now, obviously, making five calls in a week is not acceptable, um, but they made their phone calls. And so we're just going to click, and we're going to listen to these phone calls really quick. And so we're just going to sit down, and you listen in every single one-on-one. -on -one, you listen to two random phone calls this person made. I don't care if it was when they were presenting an inspection notice or as a new lead or as a six-month call to past client. You don't look at it that way. You just say, we listen to two random phone calls every one-on-one. -on -one. It takes 15 minutes, and you coach. Because who cares if you're getting a million leads coming in? Who cares if you're closing a 1,000 transactions? If those first phone calls, whether it's a virtual assistant making it or your agent's making it, if those phone calls are handled poorly, you're destroying every chance at getting that business or getting a referral in the future. And then same thing is every team meeting, when you have your sales meeting once a week, and this has instant results. As soon as you start doing this, everybody gets on their game or they get frustrated and they get off the team. Or you say, okay, if you don't want to do this, you're not going to be taking my leads. Um, so there's other ways to deal with it. But in every sales meeting, you pull up the list and you play two random calls in the sales meeting with the entire team. And very quickly, people are going to start drinking during that meeting, but it holds everybody accountable right away because scripts are everything. I mean, scripts and sales and process and how you take care of the customer, if the scripts don't work, tons of resources for finding new scripts. So super long answer there, but number one would be the accountability and auditing what your sales team is doing, and then number two is coaching through the calls. And again, every type of call. There's a call for a new lead, a call when you uh, want to meet them at the house, a call when you want them to get pre-approved, call at closing, a call post-close and everybody follows the script for that, or at least the bullet points of the script, or they're not following your process. Gotcha. Okay. I love that. Guys, uh, as I transition here to my next question with Chris, I want you guys to, if you're getting any questions or anything you want to ask Chris, please type it in the chat box. I'm reading the chat box and I'll be able to pass your questions along. So if there's anything that you want Chris to answer for you, or if it's triggering anything, then go ahead and type, type it into the chat box and I will be able to uh, get your question asked. Now, while you guys are doing that, the next question that I want to ask here, you, Chris, is this. It's a two-part question. One is that when an agent is considering, or when a real estate agent is either considering about, uh, of buying a CRM, investing in a mm -hmm. CRM, or they're evaluating the one that they have now and wondering if they're getting out of it what they should be getting out of it, the first part of the question is, what should an agent look for in a CRM uh, in today's environment that could help them to really maximize their business? That's the first part of the question, so please answer that. Okay. Um, so I'd say maximize business. Everybody has a different focus on their business, and I would argue the biggest hole in every real estate agent or team's business is the business management portion. Um, Ten years ago, lead generation was how you scale the business. But even in that, revenue and leads cover up a lot of bad practices, and those bad practices are in the area of business management. If you spend money in lead generation, or if you have a team, but you don't have the accountability, the coaching, the ROI tracking, um, the kind of 
simple things in place, but the system's not doing it for you, then you're basically throwing more and more water in a bucket as the holes in the bucket are going to get bigger and bigger. And at some point, they can become irreversible. And you start putting changes in when a team's very large. And sometimes a lot of team members leave because that wasn't the culture you built it on. And so having those things in place are crucial. And it can actually make just that call coaching can double your return on your lead sources, just changing how one person answers the phone. So that accountability piece um, inside of your system, I think, is crucial no matter what you do. And then the other piece would be, uh, what are you trying to do with your business? Are you really trying to take over a farm area or a sphere? Or are you trying to do lead generation? Do you want everything in one place where you can do everything in one system? Or are you okay having two, three, or four that are connected? Because if you want to have two, three, or four that are connected, you're going to have to have somebody that manages that process. And anybody that's grown uh, a large team, whether it's a number of people, a number of transactions, systems can become a nightmare the more you have. So you can't cheap out on – most people focus on, what is it, the hole instead of the donut. Um, they really focus on how much is this going to cost me versus what is it going to save me and how much I could make additional. Kind of that whole idea of the right system in place that you know your return on investment, you have the accountability. If you close one more transaction a month or one more transaction a quarter, that's, I mean, that's probably five times more than the system even costs. Gotcha. Okay. I love that. Now, the second part of the question that I want to ask is this. What are the core distinct differences or advantages of FirePoint compared to most CRMs? And this is just an opportunity for shameless plug and self-promotion and, and demonstration of FirePoint. And I want you to take <laughs> seize, seize it and take advantage of it and really just show folks here on the call today uh, why FirePoint. Uh, yeah, no, great question, and love to answer that one. Um, I think the first thing is we are by agents for agents. Uh, we're not still in the business anymore, but when you have somebody that is running a company that's been in the business, grown a mega team, knows uh, knows how all of this works, and then in a, another person that sold 800 homes a year, and everything we develop is because our customers request it. We're not some technology company trying to just build something and sell it to agents. We're only successful if our clients are getting built what they actually need, and we've grown huge, and referrals are our number one source of that, and so just keeping everything moving the way that the agents need it to and getting their input. Um, another piece of that is that ROI and cash conversion cycle. I've never seen another system in real estate that gives you the velocity of money and helps you track everything in one place, and they can't because everything's in different places. So the idea that you can see all of this, that you can look at your, uh, put your spending in the same place that you're managing all of your leads and say how much you spent on, if I want to look at, hey, what I spend, uh, I don't know, February of 2014, I can actually go in here and see every single dollar that was spent on the different lead sources. So having everything in one place in one system for ease of use is another piece of having all these other systems that are connected, but we're still integrated with like the Mojos and the um, MailChimp, like the, the different things that you can do inside of a system. So you can still work with uh, very well with other systems. Another piece is that call coaching and protection. Um, so inside FirePoint, every agent has a phone number and that phone number, it even accepts incoming phone calls. Those are attached and recorded to a, uh, to a lead, so you can play those incoming calls back. So if an agent leaves you, it's actually the phone number on their business card is actually through FirePoint. You can just transfer that to another agent. And so there's a lot of different things that you can do with the system that you can't do through another system as far as protecting a team leader. If an agent leaves, you just assign that phone number to somebody else, and you control all the incoming, all the outbound phone calls. Um, other thing, I mean, the lead distribution we went through, having a lot of flexibility there, the team training. Uh, we do a lot of different webinars and trainings from an agent team building perspective. We also, we play very well with outside vendors. Like we have call center integrations where call centers that make calls for you, or if you have an admin making a call, or let's say somebody from my out that's making a phone call, they can make them through the system, and you can come in and just listen to those calls at your leisure. So the call quality is there, the scripting, the coaching, the call center activity, everything's coming automatically into FirePoint instead of happening somewhere else. And then probably one other piece, which we don't like to sell because it's not why we're here, is the idea of price. And price for us may be more expensive than what you're doing already, and it may be cheaper. But the way that we build our price is based on how large your team is. And so a team can scale. The team breaks up. It can, the cost can come way down. Um, and then if a team grows later on, it can go back up. So it's based on how they're actually using the system, it's not just a flat uh, a flat price no matter what you're doing. So it really scales with the growth of a team that they're getting more value from it and they want to expand what they're doing. Um, but I would, I would kind of go back to buy agents for agents as a number one. Everything we build is because agents requested it, because coaches requested it because it's something missing in the environment. And we're very close to the environment. We take a, so much input from coaches and from agents and teams, and we don't play favorites there. I mean, if something's requested by a majority of our users, everything stops, that gets built.
Gotcha. Love that. Uh, we got a quick question that came in, just a tactical question that I'll squeeze in here in between some of the questions that I have so I've left to ask. And when the question that uh, we just got was, um, are you able to link with Bomb Bomb Video? Uh, yeah, we actually have those already. So if you go into, um, let's just do like a mass email. Um, here's like the mass emails that have gone out. Actually, let's just do a new one. So I'm just going to go into a lead uh, right here. And I'm just going to click, I'm going to email this person. And I want to do this as a bomb bomb video. And so uh, you can go to your video library. You can record a new video right here. So absolutely, mass emails, single emails, um, all your past emails. Again, I don't know why this one's called beer, but it is. Um, but absolutely, uh, already integrated bomb bomb. Gotcha. Okay, very cool. Uh, let me ask you this, uh, and this is actually a question from some of the audience too. What can an individual agent do with this to maximize and grow their business, right? Let's say somebody's not trying to build a big team, uh, but they want to have a healthy, profitable business, and you know a spreadsheet isn't working to track things anymore, nor is maybe a notepad and a pen, God forbid. So what, what, what would be your perspective on an individual agent taking advantage of something like this, a CRM platform like FirePoint? Sure. Um, I would first ask the question of what do you want your business to be a couple years from now? Like what is the perfect world for your business? If you sit down that that dream session that takes two hours at a coffee shop and you're saying two years from now, I wish that everything was just in a checklist and I could have somebody else doing it or I want to have an admin. Are you looking to grow your team or are you trying to get out of the business? Because that answer is different for everybody. If you're looking to grow your business as an individual and you never want to have uh, somebody from, let's say, my out desk or an admin or another team member, then your answer is going to be different also. But I would argue the value of a business management system. Some people say CRM is just contact management. That's, I mean, we are CRM, but we also do so much in the business management. Is If you're going to spend money on lead generation, I would look at it from a risk perspective. What are you risking by not having all the tracking, which you can do it manually, but unless your kind of Excel guru is going to drive you insane, what is the chance of losing one transaction or misallocating part of your budget that you miss a transaction in a lead source over an entire year? It's probably some people it's 5000 some people it's $10,000, way more than the cost of FirePoint for an entire year. So that's kind of like, and again, that's a shameless plug, but the idea of what are you risking by not having the tracking Traditionally, what a lot of agents will use if they don't want to use any of the tracking, they're not doing any lead generation, they don't care about tracking any of that, is the idea of having all of your workflows in one place. So this is kind of a workflow you would start. So like, hey, when you have an active listing, uh, in three days, call touch base. In seven days, email a client with uh, portal activity. Everything's in one place, and you can say, hey, I want an email to actually go out, and I want to use merge tags. I want it to be a bomb bomb video saying, hey, here's the process when it goes under contract, uh, your title process, your lending process getting pre-qualified. So creating all of your contacts in one place so that you know what's being fired, um, what's going out from the system. And then if you are using an admin, this is where you say, um, hey, I have my admin campaign. This is what my admin does. You have another campaign that says this is what I do as a listing agent. So you're hitting it from two different angles, coming from different people, different videos, emails, tasks, phone calls. So you're building a cohesive follow-up plan, and then you can go in at any time and look at that accountability page um, and see what everybody is doing and what tasks are overdue, who's being hit, what's happening. So I think it's a loaded question, but it really depends where you're trying to grow your business. But from a task perspective, is anything ever missed? And then, oh, that call was made. Well, I actually want to click and listen to it and make sure they said the right thing or how did that go. That's a huge piece as well. But again, if you're using leverage from somebody else. Got it. Okay. Uh, real quickly here, and I've got some more follow-up questions I want to ask, but let's take a pause here. And real quickly, can you share a little bit about the offer that you guys have put together for the folks here at my outdesk today? Absolutely. So what we've done um, is worked with my outdesk, and we have a link, which is MOD dot refer firepoint dot net um, and that's something that I'm sure uh, could be sent out or if you need that again um, it's half off the setup fee and so the setup fee for us we don't make money on it. it's actually a loss leader for us when we look at how much time we put into the we have dedicated account managers the onboarding it's not like a fluffy of oh pay and we just turn on your site tomorrow there's a lot that goes into onboarding a new client and so we said it's a way of half that setup fee for anybody that wants to sign up from that um, mod.referfirepoint.net. And there's not a time frame on that. We're not saying that's over the next week. Um, that's just as long as uh, we're working with MyOutDesk to make sure that they get exposure to our clients, to see how our clients can leverage uh, virtual assistants, not having to hire an entire full-time employee in a location and replace that and continue to manage it. And then as, uh, as MyOutDesk wants to share that with their clients as well. 
Awesome. I love that. And guys, I just sent that out via message to all of you, mod.referfirepoint.net. But uh, for all of those of you here on the call today, I will send it, we'll make sure we send it out to you in an email as well. So if you want to go take advantage, if you can take a look at it. Uh, Chris, do you mind just typing in the U, typing that URL in and going to it, just showing them what that would look like and what the steps would be? So that's what it looks like, guys, mod.referfirepoint.net. And then when you go to it, what do they do, Chris? So right here, um, if you actually want to go to our regular website, you can just go to firepoint.net, learn more about the system. Um, but what we have here is this is our, our demo scheduler. And so if you say, I do want to do a, a platform demo, um, it can be done as short as you want. We just book an hour on the calendar, so it's blocked out if you need it. We can do a demo very quickly. Um, it's just, again, picking a time that you want to do a demo, putting in your information. We ask a couple questions because we want to make sure we're customizing this to you specifically and what you care about, not just going through some scripted thing that's going to bring a lot of stuff that you don't actually care about. Um, and then automatically puts in the promotion code. Continue, it's gonna get booked. Uh, we'll ship you out. Uh, we have some very nice marketing cloud that walks through the system ahead of time. Again, we wanna get you information in any way that we can, uh, so you can make the time that you spend with us on the phone or on the demo as short as possible. Gotcha, awesome, okay, very cool. Uh, can you talk a little bit about um, any opportunities for best practices around follow-up marketing or campaign marketing that you guys are finding looking at the big picture of what's working, what's not? And do you guys have any predefined campaigns that can be customized? I'm curious. Absolutely. So we uh, start clients out, I think it's with 19 different campaigns that can all be customized. Um, and also, so when we look at, there's a difference between lead response and then like long-term sphere follow-up. And so we preload a lot of those and we'll kind of walk through those in a second. Another one kind of where I am right here on the screen are text templates. Um, okay. If you're using texting, a lot of it comes to um, instant text response, but instant so it looks real. Um, so again, like for us, if you were to say, and again, just looking at how we do it specifically, if we were to jump into lead distribution and say, hey, when a Zillow lead comes in uh, on whatever day, we're going to say, yes, I want the, this, let's say, the Zillow template or autoresponder after hours. So you set after 9 p.m., the after hours text goes out, and you say, I want to go out after four minutes. So again, when somebody clicks the button and says, oh, I want to know about this house, and they get a text that second, they know it's not real no matter how real it seems. And so okay. you don't want to have like an instant text response. Some people do. And so we always say after a delay, give it a couple minutes so it looks like an actual response. And you can say things like, um, hey, I'm busy right now, but I'll call you in just a couple minutes. Is there anything I can do for you? Would you like me to send you the MLS printout of that or anything just to try and engage them? Nice. Um, when we look at those templates, again, autoresponder after hours. You can text them right away um, and whatever you want, again, with merge tags, different things that you put in that text. So texting, instant text response, you have to be careful. If you're not familiar with TCPA, uh, the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, um, about privacy, you are allowed one, in, one text response in response to an inquiry. But if you do any other automatic uh, calls or texts that are not allowed, that they didn't click and give you permission to on your site through an opt-in, there can be very heavy fines for that. So again, this is an instant response to what they inquired, so it's compliant. Um, and then another piece, if we look at campaigns, so there's uh, email templates, there's text templates. Campaigns are what we preload, and so we'll, we preload like an active listing campaign, 10 days of pain, some people say 10 days of opportunity, whatever you want to do with that. Um, we have a long-term buyer, a short-term buyer campaign. Um, so we have 19 that we preload into the systems, like this long-term buyer. This okay. would be somebody that's not looking to do something right away. And so, again, it has tasks, it has emails going out. Um, so all kinds of stuff, and it goes, I think, for a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, and then you can customize any of these. This is as it comes, and you can go in, you can copy it, you can delete it, you can add steps in between of additional emails, you can go into any email here and change it up, put a video in it, you can do full HTML, put images, tables, I mean, you can do whatever you want with this. And so you can, um, you can add, be very customized to what you want to do, but we at least give you the baseline to work from as far as ideas. And then what we can also do is if a coach, uh, say a real estate coach or real estate vendor has their recommended follow-up plan, we can actually, that coach or vendor can build that into FirePoint and we can copy that directly into a client's office when they start with FirePoint. So if we take, uh, again, you were talking about Bob Corcoran, we are talking about Bob Corcoran, if he has his 17 campaigns that all of his clients use, we can push those into their client's office when they start so they don't have to manually rebuild everything. Gotcha, okay, awesome. Thanks for answering that question. That was from Debbie. Debbie Jones. Uh, I got a question from Jerry now. Uh, he asks, is this a primarily a CRM and reporting accountability? Uh, is this primarily a CRM and reporting and accountability, or does it also include customer-facing website, et cetera? 
So uh, this is everything from customer-facing website, outbound calling, inbound, lead generation, home valuation, pay-per-click, MLS integration. You can have as many MLSs on the same site as you want. So if you're in 30 areas, they can all be on one map. They can have different links that go to just specific cities. Uh, custom pages, SEO, I mean, you can build whatever you, whatever you like. So if we say, um, hey, we have builder communities, then here's a page just about builder communities with all the child pages. So it depends how far you want to go as far as building, um, like let's say, video testimonials. Um, you have all your testimonials here. Um, so you can build the website, the home searching. If we say, hey, I want to see all the homes for sale, in 80126 or in Highlands Ranch. Now I'm going to say I should look for Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Here's all the um, search. And then the search itself has all the terms from the MLS. So on the front end, um, you can limit, we limit what shows because we don't want them to have access to the full MLS. We want them to be able to go through an agent to find that. But way more than you can get, like on, obviously on a Zillow or anything else, that's the reason to use this to have people keep coming back. But on the back end, so if we actually jump into um, like a lead here, as far as we are managing it and we jump into, I mean, again, you can text, everything goes back and forth, uh, but if we want to set up a search for James, let's go ahead and do this very quickly. The search terms an agent has in the back end is everything that's in the MLS, so way more than a client has in the front end. I mean, site features, types, sewer, all of this, so very customized as far as how searches are going out, and then go out like immediately, daily, weekly, who sees seed on them, or email statuses, are they still good email? So, Super long answer, but it's a uh, front end, back end, videos, SEO, um, kind of semi custom website design, all of it. Awesome. Okay. Got a question from Ryan or Rin. Does the software offer any integration with Zerpo lead gen systems? Uh, absolutely. So we have, we can pull in leads from any other source, as long as there's an email or they um, have an API, whatever that is. So we have clients that have all their Zerpo come in. Uh, specific to Zerpo, they actually have it where, um, or we have it built, where when emails come in from those clients through Zerpo, if they reply to an email from Zerpo and it comes from Zerpo and those are aimed at FirePoint, those emails will actually come in and get attached to the lead inside of FirePoint as well. So if we just jump back here to this lead, and so if they're replying to emails inside of Zerpo, you'll actually see those here as uh, activities that the email came back in through Zerpo and it gets loaded directly into FirePoint. So uh, I mean, we have probably 100 different lead sources out there. All of these can come into FirePoint automatically, even if using sign call systems, where when somebody calls a, call a sign, an email gets sent. You end those at the FirePoint system, which your account manager helps you do, and all those leads automatically come in, hit lead distribution if they're already assigned, the notifications go to the agents or the agents that are assigned to that. It's a very seamless process. Gotcha. Okay. And guys, again, you go to mod.referfirepoint.net to get half off, right? 50% off the setup fee. Is that right, Chris? That's absolutely correct. Yes. And while we're on the call here, um, talk, let's talk about this. What are the main one, two, or three typical objections or um, misplaced beliefs about why a real estate agent might not necessarily take a, a, take action on, uh, on investing in a CRM or might not take action on upgrading to something that's this comprehensive uh, and this sophisticated. What are some, typically some of the limiting beliefs that you find agents will deal with? Uh, I'd like you to bring those up, or at least one of them they might find is common, if not two or three, and then kind of share your guys' perspective and answer to it. Yeah, I would say the first one um, is you hear from anybody, which, uh, what is it, cost is only a question in the absence of value, um, that if people understand, and this is for any system out there, which means we hear it as well, um, everybody has a budget, and they have what they're looking for. So one of the challenges we run into, again, we everybody has salespeople, and we have people that do demos for the system who may be a right fit or not a right fit, is a question of what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the cost or are you focusing on what gets delivered? So if you say, well, all I want is a website, absolutely. There's a cheaper website out there. Our question is, though, can you at least answer all the other questions that you know your return on investment, you know your cash conversion cycle, you are doing the, the call auditing and the scripting, which anybody from a corporate sales environment, if you're not listening to calls, going on appointments with people, you don't have a job. That's the job of a sales manager. And a sales manager can increase sales a thousand percent just by effective management if they have the right tools. So I think that's kind of focusing, uh, what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on how you can make the most of what you already have? Or are you saying, no, 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 I just need a website. I don't care about any of that stuff. Um, so that's the number one thing, just for us to find the client that falls in love with us and that we feel like we're a good fit for, they're wanting to run a more effective business 
and do it in one place instead of trying to piece together 15 other systems, log into all of them, because that still doesn't give you all the information. I mean, now you're duplicate entry, you're going to different systems, and more balls get dropped. That's the number right. one by far. Okay, awesome. Um, number two would be lead generation. Some people are only looking for lead gen. And we do lead gen. We do it very effectively. We're transparent. So um, like with another vendor, you may pay $500 a month for lead gen and you just get leads. We actually share all the information about the campaigns, what's happening. You make decisions on what areas, what price points. So a lot more transparent with how we work with that, which is what our clients wanted. So we did that, which is at their client's request. Um, but if you're just looking for lead gen, it's an interesting thing to say, hey, I'm going to pay for this platform that I'm not going to use. I don't care about anything that it does, what's really built for the business management, but all I care is the leads now with those leads to go somewhere else. Um, we do that, and we have some clients that only want to use us for lead gen. And that's totally okay. They buy a system. We do lead, lead generation. They make money. They're happy, but that's not our core. We're not going out saying, hey, we just want to run ads for you. That's not really who we are, but we do a great job of it, and some people want to do that. So for us, it's kind of a little bit of a mismatch. Our job, we really try and convince them how much money are you losing by not coaching? Like just the just the call partners, just being able to see all the communication or be able to see the response rates and bounce rates of your mass email so you can fine tune what we're doing. Those things are worth so much more than the system itself, but some people just don't want to do that. And again, we can't change their mind. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Final question here for me, and if there's any other questions, guys, out in the audience, then go ahead and please ask. But this is going to be my final question here as we uh, as we wrap this up. Um, if somebody, from a best practices perspective, if somebody takes advantage of this offer here today and gets in contact with you guys and goes through a demo by going to mod dot or refer firepoint dot com, right? Um, what would be what would be the first one, two, or three steps that they would take? To maximize their success with with FirePoint over the next 70 days, like I, I know that you guys go through a demo and you guys ask a lot of questions, but kind of just as the best practices or kind of kind of a just um, what you guys see working, no matter what the goal is of an agent or what the or what the tool, which part of the tool they're most attracted to, kind of if we were to future pace and future cast, you know, kind of imagine what it would be like if, right? So. Can you give me two or three specific things or share two or three specific things with the audience here where it's like, imagine when X is being done for you. Because I know it's one thing to look at all the features and, you know, and benefits, but I feel like you guys are so comprehensive and I hope you take this the right way, but you guys are so comprehensive and sophisticated that honestly, even a guy like me, it could be a little bit overwhelming looking at it all, but I might be able to recognize the opportunity. So can you in layman's terms, boil down like the two or three things that would happen as a what if like imagine if in the next in the next 30 days or imagine when x is being done for you or when you don't have to deal with y or when z what would it do for your business if z is solved can you kind of frame two or three benefits for us like that as just kind of like what would we experience how would we feel it and see it and recognize it and experience it in our businesses absolutely um, I think the first one I would go to, and all of this is built around accountability and your team itself. So I'm not going to say, oh, you have more leads. Again, leads are everywhere. But the first one would be, what if you could have one place where you can do what you want to and you can choose what to implement whenever you want? So instead of logging into another place or I can't see this in one place or somebody put it in the wrong place. Those mistakes are insanely expensive and just the headache on your brain trying to go through and pull all the pieces together as you're growing and dealing with everything else in your life. One place where everything is, where you see what you need to do, what's coming up, and you can look at that for everybody else on your team no matter who they are. One place to, I mean, really quick, if we jump in here, uh, let's just jump into a lead. This is just the idea of it. I'm going to jump into Jimmy. And I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, uh, Jessica or Brandon, uh, please call on Tuesday. And he gets a text and email of that, one place for all your communications. So again, simplifying your life is one piece where everything can be done. I know it's a really vague one, but instead of having to go through six different places, there's a record of it here forever. Everything's tracked, what people did, what they didn't. Simple way to manage a business. You don't have to have all the complexity. The next piece I would say is what if you could see again, what if this list is only three people long? It doesn't have to have 20 different users. Three people long and you can see everything about them 
every day whenever you want. Are they on top of their business? Do they have leads they haven't even viewed? Do they have leads that they have no tasks for? When I say leads, it could be people 10 years old. They have no tasks. They're never going to know what to do with them next. And you can see exactly what they've done over the last seven days. And you can say, hey, you worked 40 hours. You sent three emails. You made 15 calls. Just walk me through what's going on. That transparency and that peace of mind, you instantly know who's productive, who's not. And when somebody says, oh, I made 70, I called 300 leads last week. Well, you only show eight calls here. Why don't you make them the system? Why don't you log them for 22? The transparency there and the peace of mind, I would say, is number two. Just you can look at something, see where everything is, everything's in one spot. And again, we're not talking anything about using uh, campaigns or trans like managing transactions or ROI reporting. This is just ease of life if you just have everything in one place and see what everybody's doing very quickly. And again, you can click on all these things and see what those leads are and drill into them, uh, absolutely. And then the last piece would probably be the most impactful in your business, which I haven't seen done in other systems, and I haven't seen them coach like, hey, you need to do this, is the idea of listening to the calls. If you have anybody other than you making phone calls to your clients for any reason at all, even if it's just past client surveys or calling on inspections, those are such make or break phone calls that if you're not monitoring, monitoring them, you're putting that money out there and you're just hoping that it works. And making a change there can cut your conversion in half or can double it if you're willing to listen to a couple phone calls a day, a couple a week, and manage the process. So again, just be able to come in and say, hey, for the last week, last two weeks, change the date range, whatever, click, I'm going to listen to a couple, and I'm going to hold this person accountable. Those would be like the three most impactful things you could do that don't take a lot of time. But then again, uh, especially with our system, you can grow on it and build more things out and build the SEO and the front end websites and all those different things. But these would be just a simple come in and have a huge impact on your business day one. I love that. Awesome. Um, final question here from somebody in the audience, uh, from Debbie again, I believe, yep, uh, is what is what is the what is the pricing? She says, I see three hundred dollars setup fee on your website, but do not see monthly pricing. So on the pricing tab on our website right here is three hundred fifty dollars a month. So that comes with five users. Uh, you can pay fifty dollars a month for each additional user, and then there are a couple of things like if you want to have additional MLSs, so you want to have six MLSs on one page. You don't have to buy additional systems. We do charge fifty dollars a month for each additional MLS. Um, so there's other things that you you can include into this. But base price, $350 a month for five users, and then $50 a month for additional user. If you're a large team, like we have brokers of 150 people, we have discounted pricing if you're going over kind of that 20, 50 users. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. Guys, um, we're pulling up. We're actually at the hour now. Mod.referfirepoint.net to take advantage of the 50% off discount and to even just get a one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one, uh, demo opportunity with Firepoint, which I think, if you don't, if you aren't satisfied with the CRM that you're using now, or you're not even using one period, or you feel like you're growing and you need to expand what's possible, and you're seeing the the advantages and the opportunity here with Firepoint, and if you received any value from the insights that Chris has shared today, then if I were you, I would go and take advantage of at least the free one-on-one -on -one demo uh, and learn everything you can there. And again, if you decide to take the next step with uh, Firepoint, then through my out desk, you get to have 50% off the setup fee. Uh, with that said, Chris, any final closing thoughts or, or insights that you'd like to share as we, as we close out the call here? Yeah, I think the only thing I would say is instead of focusing on just how to get, uh, how to get more leads, um, how to just get more in the pipeline, I would say really focus on what you're doing, streamlining everything you're doing, know the numbers that really matter today and six months from now, because if you don't, you're going to be losing way more money than you actually realize, just trying to chase more of what you've been doing in the past. That makes a lot of sense. Chris, on behalf of everybody here at, Fire, uh, at my out desk and everybody here on the call today, I want to say thank you to you. Uh, and thanks to your team as well for what you guys are doing at Firepoint. I really appreciate it. We appreciate it. So thank you uh, for being here with us today and sharing. Hey, absolutely. Thanks for having me as a guest. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, for everybody here on the call, uh, we'll be sending out a replay. So if you want to rewatch any of this, you can. Uh, we'll include a link in the email that goes directly to the special URL for the uh, Firepoint offer through my outdesk. Uh, and with that said, guys, uh, I'm sure you found this a valuable hour. I hope you've been taking notes, and I hope that you're going to go and implement into your business and take action on it in some way, uh, because as we all know, as you know, information alone doesn't do anything for us. It's what we do with the information that we learn that makes a difference. So please go and apply, and an easy step for you to be able to apply what you've learned 
today uh, is actually go to mod.referfirepoint.net uh, and be able to take advantage of at least uh, a, a more in-depth uh, a more in-depth opportunity to learn what a CRM could do for you and your business. Uh, take care, everybody, and we'll see you guys on the next call.